Hey everyone, welcome back to Xenogears. Uh, we're about to leave Doc's house. Hey Doc. Let's go home. Down this mountain where there's literally nothing beyond us. Let's see, there's the bridge. Delicious coffee. Uh-oh. So hopefully this works all right. Um, I've been having a little trouble with the recording lately. Um, specifically of like the FMVs that play in this game. So hopefully, hopefully it'll work this time. Because I would be sad if it didn't. So granted, he's been, you know, he's technically got the the background knowledge of a three-year-old because he has no memory beyond that. But uh, think about the fact that he doesn't even know what a gear is, and he just thinks they're giants, and he's just like, what? Like, it could just be a translation error, but I feel like... I don't know how to describe it. I, I feel like his his lack of a reaction was um, very telling about where he is in this world and where his place is, and kind of a lot about his characters. He just doesn't know how to react to that, um, which I guess they set up to kind of help introduce the world. Because you know, if everybody has to explain everything to the to the protagonist, then it's a it's a pretty decent way of explaining things to the player because at that point it's kind of a natural progression to be like okay well you know if you don't understand it then uh, we need to explain it to you so for the person who's playing the game for the first time hey you get to you know sit along on the explanation It's an old JRPG video game trope, the, the whole um, character with amnesia, uh, main character with amnesia, but I kind of, I like it a lot more than the, the, the today's trope of like, we're going to force you to listen to some background information in, ter in the form of a conversation with some chick over a microphone, which you know, totally makes sense, and if it's organic with the gameplay, like, you don't have to slow down and press your finger to your ear to do it, then that's totally fine. Like, my favorites were still uh, Bioshocks, where they were collectible audio uh, clips that you could find throughout the game, and if you listened to them, cool. If you didn't, you know, oh well. I thought that was a really cool way to introduce the backstory of the world you're in. Because if you didn't get that, you would still get, you know, enough talking to over the radio to kind of have an idea of what you were doing, but you didn't have an idea of where the world was in relation to where you were when you got to it. So this poor little farming town in the middle of buttfuck nowhere is, uh, you know, completely messed up. Everything's on fire, but they could put it out if it wasn't for the fact that there were giant war machines literally fighting behind us. Strange place to have a conversation, too, is just out in the open in the middle of all this. I hope Luca made it out. Is this the last time you see Luca in a video game? <laughs> uh, I really don't know. I feel like I should Google that. So how fucked would it be if Luca from Chrono Trigger ended up dying in Lahan in Xenogears? <laughs> and that's the last time you ever saw her because of that. Oh no! Bad thing are happen.
Uh oh. War. War never changes. Uh oh, dead guy. And the gear. Notice the gear is, uh, kneeling in the exact same position Faye just was. Here we go, works this time. I remember seeing, uh, the first time I got this game on the back of the box, it was like over 40 minutes of CG cutscenes or of animated cutscenes or whatever the hell it was. And, uh, they sure do lay it on in the early game and then it just goes away until the very end. So why is there a guy in there even though there's a dead guy, the pilot, on the ground? Who is that? Why do we got this sick heartbeat shit going on? Yeah. Go for it. Uh-oh. Oh my god, no! Once again, more to our protagonist than meets the eye that he can just get in one of these things. Mmm, delicious, delicious coffee. Now we get a very brief introduction to the other half of the fighting mechanics in this game, which is the gear fighting. Scratch. Scratch the side of my head. Uh, the gear fights are very, very cool. Um, easy mode set. God damn it. Combat mode. I'm about to enter combat. So yeah, let's talk about gear combat here. They give you a super quick tutorial to just be like, go for it, but you can't possibly lose this one. Uh, but the way this one works is you have an ether machine, which amplifies the uh, ether attacks you have. And I'll show that off in a second, because it's actually kind of sick. Um, you have attack, you have a charge, which works as a defense, but also restores fuel. Um, then you have a booster, which boosts your speed. And I can't remember if it boosts your damage or not. Um, and then you have items, which are actually kind of worthless, because you can't use items to... Uh, repair your gear in the middle of combat. You actually have to get special options to do that later. As you can see, I have none right now. So, the attack system, you only get one attack per round. And you either do a, a you know, triangle square or X, your light, medium, or heavy attacks. Um, and they cost a different amount of fuel. And what they do is they increase your attack level, which right now I don't have um, anything in the way of attack level because I don't have death blows, but um, that's the cool meta game to this game is that yeah, get him, man, I ain't doing shit. Um, that's the cool meta game to this game is that the special uh, combos and stuff that you can do. Oh wow, he's just juking me like it's nothing. I guess I just jumped in here, so you know, no big deal. But the death blows that you get. Um, govern the special combos that you can use in your gear. So when you're doing like level grinding and stuff like that, it's actually better for you to stay out of your gear as much as possible and only get into your gear. Wow, I'm fucking this up. Um, it's really mostly beneficial to stay out of your gear until you fight an enemy that can like kill you in one hit like a gear sized enemy. Seriously, what the fuck is going on? I've never had issues like this in the beginning of this game. Fuck it, I'm angry. We're gonna boost. Getting my ass handed to me. Light attacks. <laughs> he had one hit left in him the whole damn time. And like, it's annoying from a, you know, gameplay perspective, but... I mean, this is technically his first time getting into a gear, as far as we know at this point in the story, so the fact that they're just juking around him like it's nothing is actually appropriate. And the fact that he started to learn as the fight went on. 
was uh, really interesting. I just gained two levels from that. Jeez, man. Look at that. The, uh, the leveling in this game is really kind of strange. The, the best... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The best uh, stat boosts that you can get are large boosts to hit points or attack. Uh, defense doesn't really play too much of a role in this game, surprisingly. Uh, oh shit, I have their attention now, huh? Uh, and I'm sure somebody in the comments will be like, You're fucking wrong, defense is the most important stat, and you've been playing this game wrong since 1998 when you first got it, you asshole. Which would suck if I found out now that I've been doing it wrong the whole time I've been playing this. So Faye just totally goes for it. But anyways, the single most important thing you can do when you're grinding out levels or playing is do your best to get new death blows uh, to make yourself ex exponentially more powerful throughout the course of the uh, game. We are talking about somebody awakening already. Um, I feel like they... I feel like they really don't do a good job of hiding their own major plot twists. Actually, there's a lot of good plot twists in this game. But the big one, the big one that everybody's like, Oh, shit. Um, I feel like they do a very bad job of covering it. And I think it's, I think it's just the translation. Because it's a fantastic translation nonetheless, but I feel like a lot of the subtlety gets lost. But, I mean, that's... I don't want to say that's the American language versus the Japanese language. But, you know. Could be much, much more subtle. A little slowdown there. That's not fun. Faye's inside that monster. Oh my god, Becky. Look at her butt. So that, like, come on, Doc. The kid just can't wrap his head around the fact that Faye is inside that thing. So the kid's, I think the kid's 14 or 15, supposed to be, in Phase 18 at this point. So, using Dan as, like, a like a blueprint for the amount of knowledge that Faye's supposed to have, or where Faye's supposed to be at in terms of a mental state. Because Faye's kind of stuck as a 15-year-old at this point. Like, a 15-year-old with a good head on his shoulders, but... The way that Dan reacts in this very early game and the way Faye reacts to things in this very early game are very... It's really cool to look at, and I never thought of it when I was younger, but as I got older, I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually, like, shit. Uh-oh. Some shit's gonna go down, you guys. Drink my coffee. Delicious. Look at this fucking edgelord here. Uh-oh. That guy gave the order that edgelord is in charge. Uh-oh. No bad thing or happen. Is the video fucked up? No, it's not. Yay. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Is he covered in blood? Why is he all face covered and happy? What's happening? <laughs> Look at this shit. Fucking crazy self-destruct. Jesus Christ. I hope you guys liked Alice, cause she's fucking dead now. Holy shit. (laughs) 
So best intro to a what the fuck is going on here moment, I think, in a long time in a JRPG. In fact, you know, blame my rampant fanboyism, but I don't think another one that's just like such a big oh shit moment comes to mind. You finally gained consciousness. You went fucking nuts. So he has no idea what's going on. Damn, Dan. It's freaking out. Poor Faye. Faye's life sucks. The people of the village are all... Oh, shit! Son of the beach. Look at that damn thing. The mechs in this game, the gears, are fucking cool. I love the designs that they have in this game. Some of them are kind of dumb a little later, but like the main protagonist ones, you know, the ones your party gets later, are really, really cool. So like, four-fifths of the village, like the people, are just gone. The village itself, I mean, that got obliterated, but... Like shit. And granted, he did do the explodey thing whether he knew what he was doing or not. Now the entire village, all he knows is just blaming him for this shit. It's pretty brutal. It's brutal. So even Doc's like trying to put out fires. They just have no one else to blame. Like... I keep talking about the difference between, like, the commoners in this world and the people who are, like, pulling the strings, which at this point, we don't even know what the fuck that was. We don't know where those gears were from. We don't know what the hell was going on. We don't know why they appeared in the village. But the fact that these guys can't even comprehend that there's somebody else to hate, so they have to transfer blame onto Faye, is really telling of what's going on in this world. And you run into a lot of... You run into a lot of... Uh, uh, small towns and settlements and stuff like that, but they're all connected to the plot a lot more than Lahan is. But I feel like there would be a lot of different Lahans around this world that you just never see. So you've got to think about the amount of people that's just, you know, in this same state where they're just doing like subsistence farming and then all of a sudden these giant mecha come out of nowhere and they're like, what the fuck is this? I can't even comprehend it. Can't even comprehend that my coffee's gone, you guys. I'm really sad. So now at this point, Doc is like, maybe it's best if you just get the fuck out. It sucks. So Doc seems to have a pretty good idea of what the fuck's going on. <clears throat> Which is telling about his character. Because he's supposed to be a mentor throughout the entire game, but he's also got a lot more to him than just being a mentor character. But he's a great character. It's too bad he's so fucking overpowered that you only ever want to use him. Um, and I'll explain that once we start you know, using him. For those of you who have played the game before who are watching this, you know, just for shits and giggles, you know how frustratingly broken he is as a fighter. 
especially on the ground. Jeez, man. A lot for him to process, huh? Alright, so here we are on the world map. As you can see, we've got the big map down there. Um, there's Doc's house up on the mountain, and there's the burning husk that is Lahan that we can't even go into. That's the last we'll ever go to Lahan, unfortunately, because I like that place. Uh, we're supposed to be going into that forest, but I'm really uh, quick going to show off some of the things about the, uh, the world map here. Uh, as you can see, we've got our vision cone down there, and it's not really representative of what we can see because of the draw distance. Uh, but it's, it's your, pretty much your standard Squaresoft world map. Um, uh, you fight enemies on it, different enemies in different areas. You can see a lot, and eventually you get different navigation options around that uh, world map. And... Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff to see. There's no navigation, like there's no like platforming puzzles like in the, the regular game. You can't jump, you're always running. So pretty much standard. Lots of uh, random battles here. So on that note, I'm actually going to be cutting it here to do a bit of grinding. I'm pretty sure I said that I would be doing that in the first, uh, first episode. Um, I don't want to be underleveled for some of the later stuff, so whenever I get an opportunity to go to the world map or go to an area where there's enemies with good experience, I tend to really like to just sit back and take some time and just chillax and grind. So um, there will be a quick cut here, and hopefully you guys will stick with me, because there's literally going to be no time lost for you guys, so... Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, we are, we just did a little bit of leveling. I only got like one level, but um, I wanted to show off very quickly just a few things before we continue on with the story. One is the skills menu here. Um, so just to show where we are, uh, this is actually a really good point to show off um, how the death blow system works. So as you can see, I have um, one death blow that takes four attack points, and that is uh, Raijin, the triangle X one right there. Um, now you'll notice we have Senretsu at 100%, so it doesn't even show a bar, and we have Hagan at 80%, so it has a bar that's, you know, four-fifths of the way filled. Um, and that's the only way they let you keep track of uh, what your death blows are, so they don't even tell you what they are. Um, they don't even tell you what they are until you unlock them. They don't tell you what the combo is. Um, and one of the main ways to get the percentage up is to do combos, to do the combo that would cause the death blow to happen. Um, or do combos that are very close to what would cause the combo to happen. So like triangle X, back when I didn't have four attack points, I would do triangle square or something like that. But uh, we gain more attack points as we increase in level. Now Senretsu and Hagan are actually five attack point or combo point, I can't remember what it's called, um, attacks. So we won't even have access to them until we gain at least enough levels to get that additional attack point. Um, but this is where we keep track of our death blows. For the first, I would say 90% of the game, they're all exactly the same for each character, like the combos are the same. They do different things and they do different damage and everything like that. Uh, but they're the same, so at least that was easy enough to figure out. It's like, okay, well, you know, Faye has a triangle square, or a triangle X, and this other character has a triangle X, so maybe they all have a triangle X. And when you think about the combo system and how each different uh, type of attack has a different amount of attack points um, attributed to it, it makes sense that you only have a limited amount, so everybody would have the same. Uh, but it was a really cool system, and I really like it. Uh, abilities and equipment, that's all the same. Another cool thing I wanted to show off, and I'll save the game really quick to show it to you. I want to drink here. Mm -hmm. um, this game is broken up into chapters, kind of. Um, 
but you don't ever really see what the chapters are called unless you look at the save. So, for instance, this chapter is called Into the Woods. Let's uh, do a real quick save. Just desync everything. Woo, did it. Let's exit out here. And uh, here we are back out in the world, and before we continue on into the Black Moon Forest, um, I'm going to get into a quick little fight here, hopefully. Come on. Just to show off the death blows before we actually get into another dungeon, um, where a lot of things are going to happen fairly quickly here. So, uh, let's show off Raijin here. So that one's just one hit, but as you could see, just the fact that it's a combo makes it do more damage than a regular attack. So just to show off, let's do X Triangle to see the damage difference. And granted, it was blocked there, but it would do about 56 to 60 damage versus Raijin's 80 damage. Um, so especially for bosses, it's important to use uh, death blows effectively. And the combo system that I will go into later that basically allows you to chain... Uh, death blows together, which is really, really cool. Uh oh. I love this area just because I love the music. Also, this is the first, like, dungeon dungeon of the game. So there's a lot of cool stuff to see and do. Actually, it's kind of more or less your standard forest. There's all sorts of fun little secrets and stuff hiding in here. Yes, I know I'm going the wrong way. Although this is actually kind of the right way. The beginning here, you get a chance to uh, chase down some enemies for uh, great experience. And you'll see me do a lot of non-death blow related attacks just because I'm still trying to learn combos as this guy. Ooh, that attack though. Yeah, fucking y'all up. And finish off with the death blow. Yeah. Oh yeah, the AP is for combo, and then the other point is for not do combo. I don't know why that's still there. It should be gone, because I just killed it. Alright, so we're going to go around, and it's not entirely necessary honestly, but we're going to go around and collect whoop, collect uh, as many of the items as we can, or um, all of them in this case. Whoop. Combat! Motor combat! This guy I think we're just going to knock out really quickly. Hmm. So already, right away, you're running into an enemy that makes you change up your combat because you only ever do one damage to it. So you want to hit him with as many hits as possible in order to... Oh god. You want to hit him with as many hits as possible in order to take him down as quickly as possible. There we go. Woo! And I think they give a good amount of uh, experience. Yep. You're rewarded for doing it, and doing it well. I received an Aquasol, yay! Oops, I didn't mean to drop down that side. Come on. I could go back up the other way I came, but uh, I would rather do this. I don't remember why. A lot of this game at this point for me is muscle memory. Because if you look, that's uh, that's where we just were. So we pretty much cleared out the level here. Come on, fight me. Why aren't you fight? There we go. Just took a second to load. Whoops. Uh, let's see, did I show off an ether yet? Got Kamehamehas. Attack! Ow! Hmm. I'm not 
not going to worry about it here in the battle, but once we get out, I'm going to eat some hob jerky in order to refill my health. So I don't want to say the combat gets repetitive. Also, giant rolling boulder. Oh. I wanted to follow it, though. I'm an idiot. For some reason, I thought that was uh, going to explode. Or not explode was the word I'm looking for. Thought it was gonna break open, but that's a different thing at a later time. So, whoops. Sorry about that. Can you are for a good day. I'm gonna beat the shit out of these animals for you. To show you how sorry I am. And I'm gonna carry them home in my mouth and leave them at your doorstep. Where you won't notice until you step on them. So Faye, a pretty decent martial artist, um, considering the fact that he has no training. Alright, let's keep going. Come on. Come on. There we go. Uh oh. Like a beautiful girl in the forest. Throw down your weapon. Make one wrong move and I'll shoot. Bilingual too. Ooh. Girl, you good. Notice she's wearing a variation of the outfit that that gear pilot was wearing when Faye jumped into the gear. Uh-oh. What's gonna happen? Be quiet. I hate you. I'm saying a lot out loud. Keep attention or pay attention to the, the language here. If you've played the game before, you know what's up, but the fact that she's calling him a land dweller or a lamb. <laughs> she's not very good at this grilling nonsense. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. I'm sorry. Very quiet right now. <laughs> so his initial reaction to the tragedy in the village is just abject, just like attempting assisted suicide. Ah. She doesn't want to hurt him though. Like, how funny would it be if this is how the game ended? <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Notice he called her by name. He didn't have her name. Though. Damn! Also, I totally forgot to heal. Whoops. We'll finish this quickly enough. And I can heal in battle, I just don't want to waste a turn in like 25 seconds or 15 seconds or however long it would take. So 
So Faye doesn't know what the fuck he's doing with his life. He just tried to die, and now he's like nursing this girl back to health. What are you doing, man? Duh. But if she dies, then, you know, nobody can kill me. Heh. <laughs> A really weird interaction. She keeps going with this this derogatory term. And, like, his understanding of the situation is so base, he doesn't even understand it's a slur. Heh. <laughs> yeah. My name is Wong Fei Hong. Not really, but some people think that's uh, the naming convention he was named after. Famous Chinese martial artist. So this is our first introduction to Ellie, who is going to be uh, another playable character we'll have here for a little while anyways. So he wants to die, but he's being super friendly. But he wants to cooperate with her, and he's taking care of her, and he's taking care of himself. And now some more strange shit. For your viewing pleasure. I feel like I'm watching a Pink Floyd music video. Doing out in the desert, kid. You scrawny little woman. You must be lonely here by yourself. Say. Almost like an angelic Faye. vision. Faye. And she's screaming for me. Wake up, you asshole. Do you want to die or not? Blah. I don't know. I'm weird, I know. Alright, so now we have Ellie in our party here. As you can see, she follows us around. She pretty much follows my motion to the T. And then if we look in the uh, status menu, you can see different character. We have a character that actually has a weapon. Um, she does rely on uh, attacks, right? Um, so she has a combo system. But she is also a uh, magic user, I guess you would call her, an ether user. And she has these um, four elemental ether attacks, which are the four you deal with throughout the game. There's only four. Uh, four elements, I should say. Um, and they play off each other, so um, I think it's ice and fire uh, oppose each other, and earth and lightning or wind attack uh, oppose each other. Uh, but as we can see, she has no death blows. Um, if she does get some while we're playing here, then that's cool. If not, uh, no big deal uh, for us right away anyways. Let's see, do I have anything better for you? No, you've got the... 
best stuff you can equip right now. I'm not worried about that. Let's give you some, a little more defense here. Alright, so where am I? Where am I in relation to where I was? Just kind of an empty area? Okay. I think that's where we came from, so we have no choice but to move forward now. Oh, wait, we can go back. That's right. Or can we? I don't fucking... I don't remember any of this crap, you guys. It's been a real long time. Oh, my God. So just for the sake of doing it, I guess, um, we're going to go through and get all the stuff in this area before we go any further. So we can go back, we just have to come up here, but there's no point, uh, so we're not really going to. Instead, we're going to chase these guys around and fight them all. Come on, fight! Fight me! Fight me! Tempt me! Tempt me! Tempt me! Tempt me! I have to click on them each time. It seems like I have to click on them each time. I don't remember. So what we're actually going to do with Faye here is instead of attacking with him since he's ahead on death blows, we're going to use Ellie for doing most of the attacks and just use Faye kind of as a support character. So we're just going to have him defend for a while and let Ellie get some hits in. And that is kind of boring for the LP, so, you know, I apologize, but... Oh! There went a bunch of audio suddenly. That was weird. Um, I do eventually want to get her death blows up, and I'm not uh, not worried about uh, doing a cut here to do any grinding at this point. At least she got a level right away. That's good. So at this point, Ellie, just like, you know, the usual survival tent... Uh, just like the usual, you know, black magic user, mm, excuse me, Jesus, that you would experience in a video game. Uh, a lot less uh, hit points than Faye has. And here's where we're going to start using Ellie's particular set of skills. Because we've got these guys that we can't hit with anything but ether until they come down to fight us, so... I'm going to try and get him out as quickly as possible. Damn! Got them combos, son. Screw it. Come here, ha You're dead. We'll let uh, Ellie combo off this guy for a while. Uh, there are, you do get healing ethers later in the game, which are incredibly useful, um, and in many cases better than, better than healing items, which, I mean, normally the healing spells in a game are better than the healing items, except for a couple, you know, specific ones that you get a limited amount of and they only restore, or they restore like a large portion of your health and everything like that, or they restore it all. Oh, I... Didn't mean to get this far right away. Crap. Oh, well. Fudge it. We'll go back and grab stuff. Looked like you had a death wish. <laughs> Everybody's suspicious of everybody right away. So sad. Actually, at this point, like, from a story perspective, all you've ever known of the story so far has just been completely destroyed. So you should be feeling, you shouldn't be feeling it the same way he is, because he's just a fucking mess. But there's no, there's no, like, nice home base to go home to, there's no friends that you know. It's just him stuck in a forest with this really suspect-ass girl right now. 
and nothing else to do with himself. So he's just kind of lost at this point. So now even he's blaming himself. Also like, not breaking kayfabe, but not really a spoiler or anything, but she's a gear pilot, so to hear from this country bumpkin friggin' heck that he was able to get into a gear and like, take out a couple other gears is kind of a big... It's kind of like an oh shit moment, like this guy can fucking, yeah. <laughs> He's just losing it. Uh-oh. So here she is piloting one of the friggin' gears, and there's the one that Faye jumped in in the background there. So clearly she was part of this disaster that befell Lahan Village. learned that the reason they crash landed there was because she decided to crash land there. And she ran like a bitch. But now back to Faye, not knowing who to blame, not knowing how to feel. <laughs> Gone from suicidal, suicidal, ridiculous thoughts to just abject, like, blaming everybody else for his situation. Damn, Ellie. <laughs> now even she's putting the blame on this fucking kid. She has a point, but... Damn. <laughs> Welcome to the fuck fae A lot of rationalization back and forth from these two right away. <laughs> He's just so abjectly lost. Now back to feeling sorry for himself. Probably a little PTSD from that, honestly. Okay, you're being a little bit of a drama queen.
to. Just kind of like, eh, fuck him. Oh, she's immediately feeling bad. I feel like besides the huge Tell mecha, this takes... Responsibility. No. <laughs> look at the ba look at the bad like voiceover work. You had to pilot the gear and start fighting. <laughs> it wasn't me. Can't you it's like a bad kung fu movie where they talk and then the mouth keeps moving. Damn, girl. Not Fucking dead people are everywhere. Pilot those machines, you know. I didn't do it. Why won't you take responsibility? I'm not so strong. Why are you trying to put the blame on others? <laughs> I'm not even all that talented. Well, something happened with her. You're a coward! That's right. I'm a coward. At least that one kind of sunk up. You know, just, just a little bit. <laughs> So there's just a fucking dinosaur. Oh my god. Have to save the Aryan girl. Okay, I know this is super fucked up, but I want these items. Damn it! <laughs> I'm ruining the tension. Ruining everything. Am I even gonna get into fights at this point? Shit! Nope. I'm not gonna make that. Come on! No, get me out. There we go. Go for it. Let's go save Ely. Why not? This LP's already gone to such shit. Actually, not really. Just dropped her like six feet on her head. So Ellie should be a cool character, but already she's been a damsel in distress twice. So can we do any damage to this guy? Barely. So I'm going to build up some AP and try and get in a couple combos at once. So if you watch here, when I attack, I've got the four combo points at the bottom. And if I only use one of them, the ones I didn't use get stored in my AP gauge above, which I can then use to attack. So let's store up 12 here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is the combo system where you can actually use your death blows in a continuous combo based on how many uh, attack points you have. Or ability points or whatever the fuck it's called. So since I have 12 and Raijin costs 4, I'm going to be able to use it 3 times. Let's do it. It speeds it up and it's super cool. So once you get to uh, later in the game and you have three people in your party most of the time. Oh shit! Anyways, once you have three people in your party most of the time and you're fighting like bosses. And there's some pretty challenging bosses in this game. Um, some it's I tend to have like one person on attack, one person on support, and one person just building up combo meter to do uh, big hits when you need it. So like big uh, death blow combos. <laughs> so. 
So we're not two hours in. We're not two hours in and we're already <laughs> fighting dinosaurs with giant fucking mecha. So that's, that's cool, you know. Bam. And now I can show off one of the, uh, the, the actual combo attacks that you use here. So I use the heaviest attack right there. Oh. It's hitting me with slow, that's not good. But if you notice down on the bottom, my attack level is now one. And what that means is that I've built up, I've built up basically an attack charge that I can use to do a combo. Now, no matter how high your level is, once you use it, it's gone. So, let's say you get to attack level like three. If you use a level one attack, you lose, you use one of them, but you still have two left over. Um, and then you get level two and level three attacks later. So the gear combat becomes, uh, uh, actually, let's use the ether machine here. The gear combat becomes uh, like a nice cycle of doing regular attacks until you have enough attack level to do uh, heavier attacks that you want to do. And for the most part, um, all combos and death blows are damn near unavoidable. Their hit percentage is so high that you will rarely ever see someone dodge a death blow. So to show you the amplification that these gears are capable of doing on ether attacks. That was that little dumbass fireball I did. Now granted it did no damage, but it looked impressive. Shut up. <laughs> Damn, block it. Or dodge it. Shut up. Words are hard. You try words. And even if or it fell right on her. If you notice, even the basic, even the lowest level one attack still does more damage than your heaviest regular hit. So it becomes, or it's extremely incentivized to use those as often as possible and as much as possible and finding a very good balance of, do I want to use mid-level ones and hit, you know, every other turn or do I want to use the low level ones and be able to hit a lot in a row or do I want to charge up for a big one? Um, and it really depends on your play style. I'll probably change it up a little bit between the two, or between several different uh, combo and play styles, just to just to kind of vary up the combat. Because I don't want to say it gets samey, because I don't think it gets samey and like the combat. I don't think it becomes. Uh, I can't even think of the word. I don't think the combat becomes extremely repetitive, but you do end up using the same combos throughout the entire game. And granted, you get like, I'm going to say 9, 10, maybe 11 of them, so it's not that big a deal because you're almost always learning something new or learning it with a different character or rotating a different character into your party. Um, but you do run into the issue of, oh, I'm pressing the same buttons over and over again. Faye makes a good point. No desire for power, hating gears, hating combat, but still a total badass. I know you will be fine. There's a lot to say about the fact that Faye just intrinsically knows what to do with this gear. So already we have a new fland and Satan's here to hang out with us. Dr. Uzuki, great character. Doc being like the ultimate wingman. 
He's like, yeah, this fucking attractive looking dude over here. Yeah, he was like so into saving you. He just started punching the dinosaur in the fucking face. And she's just like, ugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man, Doc putting out fires all over the fucking place. I'll just put it on your tab. I love that. At least he seems to have gotten over his... ridiculous self-pity at this point. Mood swings. I think I said it earlier, but I feel like this takes after Gundam where, like, half the story when you're dealing with these kids is just fueled by, like, teenager emotions. Alright, so I think we're actually going to end the video right here. We uh, fought a giant dinosaur as the finale, and then hung out. Yeah.